let's go with this one first. The John Mayer yellow gold Daytona green dial. Is John Mayer its official name? No. Or is that a nickname given nah, to it's it? A, that's, a, that's a nickname. At its peak about two, three months ago, uh, these were 140, 150. Wow. And now they've pulled back to about 120. And the list on this was what? The list is uh, close to 40. Well, so there's still an incredible overage on the on the MSRP. Oh yeah, a year ago this was eighty thousand. So at the end of the day, that's what we really should be discussing. Is that yeah, sure, there's a pullback on these watches, but if you look at the numbers based upon where they were a year ago and then two years ago, they're still way up. But you'd be upset if you were one of the unfortunate ones that paid the extra 20, 30 percent, right, right? Right. So what do you predict is going to actually happen? What, what will happen to this watch? Will it maintain? Will it go down? Where, where's your thoughts and why? Before we discuss that, um, technically speaking, what we should discuss is, is what's, what's the actual realistic situation if you are a consumer, a private party, compared to a dealer? I like that. Okay. So let's say you're a you're a collector, let's call it a collector, and you were fortunate enough to buy this watch from your authorized dealer at retail, and you now think that you've got yourself a $140,000 watch in your hand, and you want to liquidate that watch. But then you're not a true collector. Well, then you're a dealer. Well, you're a flipper. A flipper, you're right? A flipper, you're a flipper, or you play with watches. Right. So that, that's what a lot of my customers are basically. They play with watches. So they, they know guys in the gray market, they know dealers, but at the same time, they network with authorized dealers and do their best to work the, the, the games that you have to play with these authorized dealers to try to get watches. You know, after working at authorized dealer and begging and begging and begging, and they, the watch finally came in and you were fortunate enough to get this watch. What do you do with it now? How do you sell this watch? How would, how would you sell it? Well, I wouldn't because, because the problem is they have serial numbers, right? And if, if your authorized dealer ever found out that you had sold that watch, you'd be blacklisted. So well, you, you well, never get well, any that, Well, that's a good point. So, right? So, so but, I, I don't buy them to flip them. I buy them because I enjoy them. Well, I know you but don't. But I don't enjoy I know, them I know, anymore. I know, I'm scared to freaking buy them. But that's yeah. besides the point. You don't buy them to flip them. But I'm just saying uh, there, there are guys that, you know, they feel like their, their payday came in. They, right, got, they right. got the watch for yes. 40 grand plus tax. And now they think they've got themselves a hundred thousand dollar profit built in. Right. As of today, if you go and try to sell this watch to a dealer, it's not going to be so easy to find a dealer that's actually going to want to write a check for more than ninety thousand for this watch. Which is still a good profit. That's still a good profit, but it's not a hundred forty thousand dollars. But even that dealer today will be questioning: Would this be worth? 80 next week because the way they're falling, right? Right. What I feel is going on in the market right now is the amount of people that have confidence in the market that are speculators is dwindling. What do you think the reason for this is? What, why are these watches going down? Because they were overinflated in the first place? Watches started dipping in around April. This is the tax season. So this is always, always you see a lull in the market, but that's not why it's kind of sharp dipping because of the war the whole economic situation is sort of in turmoil that's true that's i true. mean just yesterday we had a dip in the stock market of uh what was it 800 points or something like that yeah just, but just the yesterday. feds put the interest rate up by half a percent which was a huge increase i right. mean that, that's so that's also chasing the inflation right the fact of the matter is even though you it's it's hard to sell a watch right now to a dealer like it's hard to find guys to write checks at those old prices right you don't really have people doing panic selling right now so you can't go and buy a watch let's say that used to be at the top of the market let's say this one right here this white gold um, that was fetching seventy five thousand. you can't just go buy this watch for 50 grand right now right it doesn't exist right like the market hasn't crashed but you like but you wouldn't pay seventy for it anymore. No, dealers not going to pay seventy. But it's 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 hard to find it for right. less. That's that's. But I, I, there's I also the aspect. There's also the aspect. A lot of dealers, and I think it's the dealers that really they create the marketplace, right? They've bought all these watches. A lot of them have bought them at the old money, and they've sat on them and they've watched them go up and up and up. They've held them back so that people can't go and buy the watches, and they've hiked the prices. People aren't buying them, so now they're dipping and trying to get them sold. Yeah, they're, they're dipping, but only by like a very marginal amount. At the moment. Yes, at the moment. So 
It's sort of a situation where you don't really have people desperate to sell and you don't have people desperate to buy right now. So the market's a little flat. That's why a lot of dealers complain there's really not a lot of action right now. So let's go through some of these watches. Let's talk about their values. So this is a Royal Oak. So years ago, this thing, uh, let's say three years ago, uh, this was a dog, this brown dial Royal Oak. Ooh, that's painful to someone that owns one. Yeah, but th this was a dog and then became very collectible, this okay. brown dial. So this went from being something that was trading in the in the twenty thousand dollar range, and then all of a sudden shot up in, into around. I've seen them around sixty thousand dollars. Really? Yeah. Whoa, yeah. that's yeah. crazy. So I need fifty for this. Yeah, yeah and that's stain, uh, It's totally scuffed up. It's unpolished. Incredible. And that's fifty thousand. That's 000. really incredible. Okay. What but, about this guy? Okay. So believe it. This is a very expensive watch. This is a very rare white gold thirty nine millimeter with a salmon dial. Oh man. Yeah. You can see. Oh yeah, these, you can feel immediately. You can see these posts on the internet for two hundred thousand dollars. I remember ten years ago, this was a forty thousand dollar watch. Incredible. And how much are you asking for it? What uh, is it worth so today? Uh, we need for this. I think I need one, one seventy. That's just crazy. Yeah, it is crazy.